Women have the greater right of destroying feminists because apparently feminists think they hold the authority to speak on the behalf of all women. If you'd like to see how naive and foolish some can get, then tag along for this video until the end. First up, we have a feminist getting triggered on the concepts of a housewife. Housewives have existed for centuries, but apparently when this woman got to know what a housewife is supposed to do, she wasn't happy at all. Misogynists always want to talk about the 1950s housewife archetype in order to insult or like put women in their place, but they never want to talk about the gender norms for men in the 1950s. Housewives only existed because men were expected to be working men, which meant they got up every day at 8 a.m., put on a suit, and went off to work and didn't see their family until 5 p.m. And they had to do this because they were expected to be the sole provider for five-person families. Which was obviously more manageable in the 1950s, but bear with me. Not only that, but when it came to dating, the pursuit was 100% the man's responsibility. Which meant the guy had to initiate every date and you had to take a girl out at least four or five times before calling her your girlfriend. Definitely weren't getting laid. And then you had to get married before you were like 23. All financial responsibility fell on the man. So unless you want to pay for every date without having sex until marriage and then buy me a house and then work every single day of your life to pay for my lifestyle and children that you never get to see, don't tell me I belong in the kitchen. Next, we've got Free the Pussy Feminist. When an interviewer came up to this old woman protesting for feminism wearing a Free the Pussy, she asked if she thought the statement was sexist or not. Turns out she believes it's not sexist, but just wait and see a conservative person use the same slogan. They're gonna go nuts. Why don't you say women's rights? Why don't you say, why don't you make America great? It is great. Let's keep America well, great. Well, that's another slogan that he has. Yeah, that is the 2020 slogan. Keep America great. Next up, during a comedic set, a member of the audience heckled Amy Schumer. Amy's boots were the subject of a heckler's remark. Amy responded by saying that she got these boots at the corner of, you can't afford them and stop talking to me. You want to know where I got my boots? Um, okay, uh, they're at the corner of, you can't afford them and stop talking to me? Here we've got feminists freaking out on vomit. This woman was deeply concerned about how patriarchy has oppressed all women around the world. So when she saw her own vomit, she thought patriarchy was behind it as well. Oh, oh we should film it. Yeah. <laughs> equal rights! Oh my god! I believe that! I don't believe in it. Homophobia shouldn't be allowed! Oh my god! I believe that white men shouldn't dictate! This woman was impatient to come and speak on the television, but she couldn't seem to find the right words. Her being at Bernie rally made it even more funny. Yeah, trans rights. Absolutely. Um, I think also, like, the differences between men and women are largely constructed by the system that we live in, in um, and are not necessarily inherently, inherently... <laughs> Like they wouldn't exist in a in a in, in like a hypothetical society where there is no oppression. They only exist because we live in an inherently oppressive you know, society. You think um, men and women? It's a social construct, not based in like genetics or anything well, like no, that. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the differences in gender, okay. which is a social construct. Like part of the reason why we need a women's march is because there is structural oppression. Oppression. <laughs> based off of the system that is based off of gender roles, largely. Absolutely. So a lot of the differences between men and women, and th those are not the only two genders, um, is based... When she was made to sit in the audience, this feminist just had other plans. She decided to show every sign of despair that she could. When you see a feminist tearing up on a TV show, you know that she was defeated hard. She apparently had some issue with Trump and she got a lesson that she deserved. I can't answer the question. Oh, you can't what ask me a question, honey. I can't answer, so okay, don't great. even answer draw. What attracted the father of the Orlando terrorist to your candidate? He's a mentally ill individual. Oh, who that's what attracted him. I get it. <laughs> Pardon me? What attracted him to your candidate? And your answer was he's mentally ill. I have no... What? Stop smiling and smirking like it's a funny thing. Fiona Asakasita from Northwestern University decided it was time to teach people about feminism. She gave a whole TEDx talk over there. Feminists must have started crying. To be standing on the stage today. Or you may have wondered how good of a feminist I am that I deserve to be speaking about such a commonly spoken about topic. The simple answer to both of these questions is, I have no idea. Wait, let me rephrase. 
Hi, I'm Fiona Asaokachita, and I am here today because I deserve it. Do I sound like a better feminist now? Yes. When asked about the gender pay gap in sports, Ronda Rousey taught everyone a lesson they all deserved. She spoke about the economics of sports, and no one could have put it better. Just another quick one about Angela's question on equality just before. Um, we've got quite a large pay dispute happening with our Australian women's soccer team at the moment. Um, is it frustrating for you as someone who's so prominent in your sport, and we heard you say on the Ellen Show the other day you are the richest fighter in UFC, that that sort of thing is still going on? I think that how much you get paid should have something to do with how much money you bring in. I'm the highest paid fighter, not because Dana and Lorenzo wanted to do something nice to the ladies. <laughs> they do it because I bring in the highest numbers. They do it because I make them the most money. And I think that the money that she, they make should be proportionate to the money that they bring in. Hillary Clinton believes that anyone who sided with Trump is anti-woman, but this conservative woman knocked her sense into her, I hope. Millions of people just like me that voted for President Trump, and there's 42% of us that voted for him and chose not to vote for Hillary Clinton. We are tired of hearing from people like her and Michelle Obama and liberal Hollywood elitists that we should vote for somebody just because they're a woman. We're tired of being lectured to about what we should think and what we should believe and uh, who we should vote for. We are intelligent people and we can think for ourselves. And the definition of feminism is to think independently. And apparently that's not what we're allowed to do anymore. A lot of Republicans say the feminists are teaching tolerance of everyone, women's rights, unless, unless you think differently than they do. You agree with that? Correctly, it's it, correct. It, it's you're you're allowed to to you're not allowed to think differently than they do, mm -hmm. and if you do, you're shamed and you're ostracized by them and by their the Hollywood elitist that think like them. When the woke audience she was around was celebrating obesity, Katie Hopkins took a stand everyone is scared to take. She fought for the obese feminists on national television. Hey, so I take issue with everybody clapping. What what exactly? Are you clapping? You're clapping someone for being fat. Is that what you're clapping? Well, maybe you should hear me no, first. No, I'm, I'm just going to ask let, why let, people are you clapping. You haven't asked me what I think, and Andrea, maybe you should listen. I'm asking why people are clapping. Okay, well, let's look. I'm ruthless. No, I'm honest. You, he said you're rudeless. And let Andrea speak as, as our guest in the audience. Okay, what? so Katie, you're looking at me here. I'm size 26, I'm 18 stone, I'm 45 years old, okay? You said you've never seen a fat, happy person. You're looking at one. Because fat and being fat and happy is... Okay. I do not know what you are clapping. I do not understand what you are clapping. Because I do not why, understand why, don't why, why, don't why don't you address Because yeah. they're the ones clapping. I know, but she's the one speaking. Okay. And she's saying that you've just called her lazy. You've said yeah, that yeah. she's fat, she's mm. unhappy. And, and she's trying to explain herself. She said, I'm this weight, I am happy. So why don't you deal with her rather than the crowd? Because but, it's interesting to me that we're celebrating the wrong things in this no, society. No, we're not celebrating. But what? I don't believe you can be fat and happy. You I see, think you it's think when this feminist was asked by the interviewing woman about the reasons and facts behind Infowars being wrong, she kept on talking about how you know about it, sis. This is the go-to move for all feminists who have brains the size of nuts. Oh, no, you already know. Don't worry. Can you, give, you, you can't really know, accuse you people. You literally already know. No, I'm not, I'm not accusing you. We know. It's a f***ing fact. Then tell me one. Tell me a fact. I don't have to because you already know, sis. You need guts to justify your obesity on television, and that too when you think your problems are not your problems and are someone else's. I certainly think that we all want to feel good about ourselves. That's understandable. Um, I don't think people should feel demeaned uh, by their size. And I also couldn't agree more with the message of daily exercise. No matter what size you are, you'll certainly benefit from daily exercise. You can't be healthy without that. Um, but then let's talk about where we disagree. Um, look, if you want to feel good about yourself, it's, it's impossible to feel good about yourself when you're doing something that's self-destructive. Also, self-destructive behaviors that result in damage or debilitation or even disfigurement to the body, that's never going to be perceived. This lady dressed up like a plum and wanted to eliminate 600 trillion US dollars of military expenditure in the US. But I guess she must have a GK of a child because there's no other explanation for it. Native Americans we're living on and there's no reason for us not to let other people come here when we definitely have the land and the resources and instead of spending like 600 trillion dollars on military we should give those people medicine and food and water and shelter. 
This feminist just couldn't believe that a journalist gets paid for her journalism. She kept on repeating her questions and she was barely holding back her emotions. You get paid to do this? Yes. By who, can I ask? Like, who wants you to be doing this? Oh my god, it's a scam. She's like running a scam. Do you enjoy doing this? I do. Don't you have a degree from Kent? I do. And this is what you choose to do with it? Yeah. There will be a shortage of the supply of heat cream considering how devastated feminists must be right now. Well, that's about it for today's video, everyone. We hope you enjoyed. If you did, then let us know by liking the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on anything more. We'll be uploading another video soon. And until then, take care and goodbye.